The Telrad is the best piece of equipment that you can get after buying your first Dobsonian telescope, but it may not meet your needs. I will address that in a moment as long as what it is, how to mount it and how to use it. So at the end of this video you will be sure if you should buy it or not. It was designed during the 70s and based on World War II technology for deploying bombs, but this time used for a good cause, astronomy. It is a very interesting tool and powerful. It's basically only a plastic box with a reticle and a LED light that illuminate that red reticle. And placed on the tube of the telescope, it allows you to point to the sky and easily find the objects you want to watch. Telrad was the original brand, but nowadays we have other brands like the Radiant that I'm using here because I have both. I have the Telrad and the Radiant and they are almost the same so my recommendation is for you to buy the cheaper one. Make sure you check AstroArt Finland for the best price. Uses the regular AA batteries. Two of them which are more practical to use and easy to have at home. To properly benefit from the full power of this great tool it has to be aligned with your telescope and also have a good mount. By default they come with two stickers that you can use to stick the Telrad to the top of your tube. It works well in most of the cases but oftentimes after a long period of time it gets weaker and it falls apart. It happened to me and I didn't like at all. And to get comfortable using the Telrad there are accessories that you can use like the risers. I have two. This is the tallest one with around 11 inches and I have another one with half of its size. I used both for a while and both are good if you are a tall guy like me or if you suffer from your back. However, I discovered a much better solution which is a three bracket mount in aluminum that you can use replacing the original mount that you have with a finder scope and instead adding the finder scope to the same three bracket mount with the Telrad next to it and you still have one slot available for other stuff like a smartphone or whatever you want. Being aluminium made turns it into a stiffer mount and much more reliable. However, to use the Telrad with this mount you have to buy a dovetail and attach it to the Telrad then to the mount. It's a very simple thing to do and I leave the links of all the materials at the description. However, you can use it just as is with the stickers and later in the future if you want you may upgrade it. Just try to place the Telrad in the best position possible which usually is near the top of the tube. If you have doubts about the correct placement just place it first with a strap or a cord or a bungee cord for a while until you are sure about the position that is more comfortable for you to use. That way you will not damage the stickers that come with the Telrad. There are other accessories that you can buy for the Telrad like the Dew Shield or the Dew Heater but I don't use them. If really needed I just use the hair dryer but if the Dew is excessive I just store the telescope. But as I said before, it may not suit your needs. That's because to use the Telrad, you need your sky to have not much light pollution. You can have some, but you need to see some stars in the sky. Because the Telrad doesn't magnify anything. It's to be used like a geometrical point of reference, which is very fun to do. <laughs> Don't worry because I will demonstrate that in a moment. So if you have heavy light pollution in the middle of a big city, you may prefer to use the finder scope. However, having both will allow you, when you move the telescope to a darker site, to have already the Telrad ready to use. Analyze very well that before you buy this interesting tool. But if it fits you, you will need to know how to properly use it. And it's very easy. But in order to use it, you have to align it with a telescope which is also very simple to do. Just use a regular eyepiece and point your telescope to a bright star that you know and can identify in the sky or to a planet or to the moon. 
center the object in the eyepiece and then move your head to the tail rod and just center the object in the tail rod red reticle. To do that just play with the three small knobs that you have in the tail rod. You will get used to it very quickly. So quickly that you will see during your observations that if you by accident bump the tail rod and you mess the alignment you can quickly repeat the process of alignment with the three small knobs that you have in the tower. No big deal. First, let's see how to find the easiest objects. I mean, objects that you can easily find with naked eye, like the moon, the planets, and the brighter stars you can see in the sky. To do that, just place your head in front of the tail rod and center the object in the reticle. You can regulate the intensity of the reticle. What I usually do is to start in the highest brightness and then I will reduce to the minimum. Because at that minimum level it's much easier to use the tail rod to triangulate the objects. However, oftentimes we can't see any reticle, so push it to the maximum until you see the reticle. That's the way to go. So for instance, if you want to watch the Jupiter planet, just point to it and center in the reticle. Now let's level up and try to find the Orion Nebula. If you can see the Orion Belt, these three stars, just make a tangent with the outer circle of the tail rod to one of them and then slide down until you find the nebula. And as this nebula is so bright you can use the help of the finder scope after using the tail rod. Sometimes it's a powerful combo. Let's try with another one, for instance the Eskimo Nebula, a tiny planetary nebula in Gemini constellation. You should see the bright star Pollux, so just count two stars to the right and again make a tangent with the outer circle of the tail rod. Using the application to help you, you'll know that you have to move just a bit down to find the nebula. Then move to the eyepiece and try to find it. You see, it's funny and simple to do this. Now the Crab Nebula. After find Taurus constellation, try to find this faint star, which is near the nebula. Then just make the tangent, this time with the inner circle. You will be almost there. For the record, the smaller circle has half a degree, it can fit the moon, the middle one 2 degrees and the outer circle 4 degrees. But there's another issue that usually happens with the tail rod if the night is with a bit of dew because the tail rod is the first instrument that will get blurred everywhere. So what I do to delay that is to keep it protected until I'm going to use it. So when you are doing the cooldown or warm up of your telescope, you should keep that protection on, delaying that dew formation over your instrument. I simply used a bit of foam and duct tape to do this cap that fits the top of the tail rod. And this will not only protect the tail rod from the dew, but also as you will have the routine of placing again the cap on after the observation, when you store the telescope inside, that will remember you always to turn off the light of the tail rod. And that way you will never forget the tail rod on after your observation. That will save the power batteries and they will last long. They can last more than a year. But it's not enough to find objects quick and easy. You also got to have them sharp and well defined in the eyepiece. That's why you may want to watch this video next to learn how to properly focus your telescope.